two-time champion Renee Osterkamp having a tight grip on the points race. The Finger Lakes seems like an apropos destination. So to get into the spirit of the local cuisine, pour yourself a Rattlesnake Rosie's Forbidden Apple Pie Whiskey, grab a spinach and feta stuffed pretzel, and enjoy the doubleheader action comprised of a 40-minute feature followed by a 25-minute sprint. From Watkins Glen International, it's Apex Online Racing's Formula Renault 2.0 Season 11 Championship with rounds 7 to 12 on the schedule. And you can see both races live as they happen right here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. And Empire State, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another GSRC broadcast. Joe Peak joins yours truly, Bill Soups on to bring you our words eye view. Sean Ambrose has director duties armed with cameras locked and loaded by Dougie Beard. Joe, for most sim racers and fans, Watkins Glen is a familiar stop, but the name alone doesn't tell us much about this place because it comes in many different configurations, inner loop, no inner loop, boot or barefoot, all of which get their fair share of racing. What version do we get this afternoon? This afternoon is the classic boot config. This is what Formula One raced on back in the 70s, so it's rather fitting that our open wheelers take to this chicaneless layout. It's all fast sweepers around this long three and a half mile circuit. And with a scant 11 turns, you think there isn't much to memorize about this place, but the varying cambers and surface changes means you better have done your practice. While this is a driver's track and the setup of the car will be relatively important to finding speed, it's also very much a draft track. Sometimes drivers on iRacing jokingly call it the Talladega of road courses, so expect to see some strategy games played during today's event. But to really show you the incredible speeds these cars can take around a 60-year-old track, let's hop on board the GSRC Lap Guide. All right, we've got Amjen Yama to the GSRC Formula Renault 2.0, so let's do a lap around Watkins Glen. Coming down to turn one, you can break very late, but the drop in elevation will make it easy to overshoot the apex. You'll be able to track out over the curb a little bit, but try not to overdo it, since it can in fact hurt your exit speed. And you'll see later why you need that. As we climb up the S's, it's flat out and mostly a matter of minimizing your inputs in order to help carry the momentum. The high downforce will mean too wide could be possible through this notoriously narrow section of track. But as we get to the top, here's where every ounce of speed will pay dividends. The backstretch will be where everyone tries to set up passes since it ends in the heavy braking for the inner loop. But if you're trying to outbreak someone, be wary because this chicane is single file. Touching wheels in an open wheel car rarely goes well for both parties. Now we've hit the carousel where you brush off speed on entry, find the grip, and then bring the power back on once you're sure it'll stick. Not much time to relax, so switch sides and line up for the shoot. The downhill braking makes it hard to get the car to turn in, but if you can hit it right, a late apex will pay you back well here. After that, you'll want to drift the car off to the left and spot your brake marker for the toe of the boot. This is another turn with a very late apex. It's going to be especially important to be able to apply the throttle as early as you can here, because the uphill of the exit will punish hesitation with a huge loss of momentum. Keep holding that left side and take a glance in your mirrors in case your competitor got a run on you. Then throw out the anchors for the heel of the boot. This is a place where you might see some passes made, but you'll definitely need to do it on the inside. Coming off, switch over to the right and slow up for the return to the main course. This is a really awkward turn because it's off camber while also requiring a late apex. Confidence when applying the gas can either help you or send you off into the tires. From there, we fly into Indianapolis. Just a little lift takes us through in this weather, but immediately we'll want to hug the left side to set up for the final turn. There's a lot of banking here to carry your speed. Just don't get greedy and smash it into the outside wall. Hopefully, you kept it on the black stuff and can now finish a lap around Watkins Glen. And as Joe talked about in his track description, you can see that that car seems pretty well suited for the track. All right, now Joe, for most AOR events, being a doubleheader, fans really don't get the precise picture of how the points were awarded until GSRC shows the best of day numbers that follow uh, that that we do the following round. But everybody had a pretty good idea of who would sit on top of the charts for Italy. Yeah, uh, Rene Ostekamp with a win and then a fourth in the sprint, which is uh, no mean feat, especially on a track so hard to pass. Obviously, comes away the best, and he is also leading our championship. So 
All of the doubters at the beginning of the season seem to uh, be getting an answer from Renee. Now, uh, look at Stefan Herman and Simon Grossman, both both pretty consistent in their results in those two races. So that gave them good results and they are in the top five. But Luke Barton and Valtteri Alander are not in the top five in our overall points. In fact, uh, there's a conspicuous driver missing. If you might notice that we have the feature win up there in the best day, but not the sprint win. And that is because Phil Reed uh, won the sprint after his feature race went horribly awry. Uh, so it's going to be uh, it's going to shake things up a little bit there in the points, which we'll get to in a moment. But that's how it wound, wound up for at least last week. Well, let's talk about those points now. Now, the GSRC stat points, Simon and Poindexter, are now taking into account all three possible drop events allowed for in the rules and these totals being shown for the first time ever right here on GSRC. Let's very quickly elaborate on just what drop races mean and how they affect the point race. You see that Sim RC Renee Osterkamp in first with a 43 point lead over Lubomir Morris for positive racing green. But that interval to the leader is only half the story. Fans must take into account what GSRC calls the pocket points. Look at that 32 by the droplet by Osterkamp's row. That represents Renee's largest unscored or dropped race. If the point leader got shut out and the, from the points today and he got zero, he'd be awarded 32 pocket points, meaning that Morris to overtake the lead, well, he'd have to overcome the 45 point interval plus 32 pocket points, which is a total of 75. And that total is impossible. On the flip side, look at how drop races has helped Simon Grossman in fifth. The raw numbers, well, in those raw numbers, he sits six with 117 points behind the leader. But when Simon and Poindexter crunch the drop race numbers, the Sim RC retro driver is only 50 points back and makes the top five overlay. Why? Because Grossman gets to drop three his three worst events, and they total zero, while the other drivers ahead of him are all forced to drop point earning results. Let's go ahead and look at the team championship now. These also take into account the three drop races. Look at the interval between first and second. It's only 32. That's less than what we saw in the drivers championship. Ostercap and Patrick Kessler for Sim RC are being pressed by their cousin teams powered by Stefan Herman and Simon Grossman. You did not see Phil Reed or Kerry Nolden in the best of day list. Likewise for Alexi Soroykin or Luba Mimura, so no surprise to see AOR Orange and PSR Green each fall a spot. How about Erka Lindstrom and Ali Hay? They keep BRT E-Racing Phoenix on the overlay for a second week in a row. Okay, Joe, I took a long time there because I wanted to drill down on those numbers. Now, compared to most of the other series, the AOR series and event details are also deserving of a little detailed look. Absolutely. That's because they do it a little bit different from a lot of race series, which is mostly just a single race. We've got two today. We're starting out with the feature race. Now, it is open setup in this series. I mentioned that's going to come into play uh, because you want to try and trim out downforce at a track like this, uh, but still keep the car, give the car a lot of mechanical grip that could help you around the corners. Uh, there are no fast repairs that these guys can rely on in this series. So if you break it, you bought it. Uh, and you can expect uh, one pit stop in today's race, which brings us to the race details for this feature race. Uh, as I mentioned, about 40 minutes long for the first one. And uh, it is gridded sequentially according to where they are in the qualifying. And I'll bring that up in a second. Again, this is a little bit different how they do it in this series compared to the others. Uh, they have an incident cap of about 15 incidents. Uh, that means that if they have an off track, hit another car, hit the wall, spin, uh, they rack up a certain amount of incident points. They will be disqualified on the spot if they hit 15 here in this race. Uh, the points are worth 32 for a win, one point for 20th place, and then you spread them in between. Uh, we could go over that later if anybody is really interested uh, in the details of that. But the reason I bring up the gridding here in this race is because where they finish in this race determines where they are going to be grid in the sprint. They're going to invert the top 20 unless you're two laps down or more. Uh, so while today is determined or this first one is determined on speed bill, the next one is not. And that's right. And qualifying that does determine the grid is done. So let's go ahead and run down that grid for you right now. On the front row, it is indeed going to be Rene Osterkamp. He's going to be inside of Patrick Kessler. Charlie Summers is going to be inside of Matty Sipla for row two. Simon Grossman and Phil Reed in the next row. Seven and eight go to Kerry Nolden and Lubomir Morris. Row five is Alexi Soroykin and flanked by Nick Thistle. 
Leonard Sherry starts in 11th with Christopher Rigby in 12th, and it's Allie Hay starting P13. The outside of that row, going to be Evan Emray. David Santana starts in 15th with the 16th spot going to Ellen Tissier. Uh, Daniel Moore starts in 17th with Tom Van Hoyman in 18th, and Loic Barb, I don't think we've seen him uh, around you yet. In 19th, Urkel Lindstrom rounds out our top 20. In blackjack is Scott Newton inside of Marty Padro, Pardro, Pardo, sorry. In 23rd position, Thomas Edwards inside of Lucas Barani. Josh Ladd and Vateria Lander, Lander way back in 26. Connor Ryan and Tim Mac, uh, Matsky go 27th to 28th. David Utlar has a penalty to serve. He's back here in 29th. Giovanni Salido and Stuart Milne round out your 31 entries, 24 put in qualifying times. Now the drivers starting to grid up their cars. Quickly take a look at the weather real fast here before we get underway. Yeah, it's got uh, actually a fairly hot track temperature, although the air temperature is pretty nice for the virtual fans. You see 103 degrees. And as always, it does have some wind, but that wind will stay consistent. So as long as drivers have done practice, shouldn't affect them too badly, uh, except for a few corners where they could get loose. Renee Osterkamp, we talked about how strong he is. He is on the front. He controls the point race, and he's going to control the field right now as we work round number eight of 12 here. Apex Online Racing's Formula 0 2.0 Season 11 Championship. We're just about to get underway. You can hear those engines start to harmonize. Gather up the chickens, take cover behind the cows because the horses are indeed out of the barn. And Renee Osterkamp leads the field down into the first corner. He's followed by his teammate, Patrick Kessel. We have a driver off going a little bit wide. Ooh, bit of a... Grossman. Go ahead. Yeah, bit of a spill. Scott Newton did a full 360, but he gets it going again. So everybody's through, but not clean. There is a nice battle. Sipla trying to hold off Kerry Nolden. You can see them side by side because they go by. Also up in front, there's a little pass ahead of them. Grossman goes around Summers. And Kessler able to get around Osterkamp. So spots one, three, and five all change position. Yep, and it looks like we got a battle behind them as uh, Grossman and uh, Summers are trying to settle that final podium spot. We're going to see a lot of this, Bill. Uh, these straights, most of them are relatively long, but the longest is definitely that backstretch where you're going to see the majority of the passes happen. Through lap number one, it is still Kessler and Osterkamp comfortably in head. They finish up as they go through the heel. Another pass for second is Grossman, and Summers continue to battle. Yeah, they've been both side by side, and oh, they touch. Bill Reed. Sipla in the mix. Sipla got into uh, that looked like it must have oh, been. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's a, that's a very blind corner, Bill. You can see just how many cars are getting piled up in it because they cannot see the wreck until they get right up there. Oh, this is going to mix things up big time. So, Roy, we'll come back. We'll look at a Soroyka and Rigby. Sherry involved in that one. Thyssen involved in it. And they just kept coming in. Oh, this is an ugly one. We'll come back and take a look at that. Meanwhile, up in front, unaware of all the nonsense going on behind him, it's Patrick Kessler, the defending champion, leading his teammate. Well, this is bad news for the fans because the fans probably wanted to see uh, the draft battles and the reason it's bad you can see right here on this shot bill uh, this has separated the field a huge chunk yes, indeed. so there's I mean there's going to be very few trains that just continue on within touch of each other and so many of them are going to be uh, are going to be suffering from damage that they won't be able to catch anybody anyways we're looking there at the leaders. Let's take a quick look at fifth position. This is Reed being challenged by Lubomir Morris. Morris doing very well in the points right now. Phil Reed also. They battle for fifth. Yep, as they come up out of the uh, toe of the boot. That's one of those places where sometimes you can get on the power a little too soon and start to lose it. You can see how trimmed out the rear wing is. Uh, on most of these cars because of the speed that they want. And that means that even though these are fast corners, uh, they're gonna be just a little slippery in places. 
And that big incident that we're going to take a look at in a minute happened right in front of Phil Reed and Lubomir Morris. It really was a, a Moses on the Red Sea type event as those two were able to get through. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I don't know how many cars actually made contact, but 12, only 12 cars decided not to pit, uh, which in a 31 car field, that <laughs> is a lot of drivers that had to come in and take stops earlier. Well, no, I guess not earlier than they need to, but it's certainly going to set them back a little bit earlier than they certainly expected to. There's probably some repairs that's going to cost them some time. As we continue, I believe, to look at this battle between, we're looking at... Uh, Sipple and Morris, Sipple, I think this is. Sipple and Morris, we're going to it. Actually, Reed and nope. Morris, sorry. Yeah, down to the, uh, this is the other place where I mentioned early on that you'll see a lot of passes, but this time Morris wasn't quite close enough and this is where you've really got to practice and, and be on your marks is these next few corners, especially this one, because if you start to lose the car and you try to catch it, there's no runoff on that outside, Bill. I've seen a lot of drivers end their day in the chute. You can see those two little dots right up ahead in third position. Maybe we can come off of this drive and take a look at that. This is Kerry Nolden and Charlie Summers is running him down. And Summers has a pretty good run here. Not going to be able to get it as he works through the boot. I think we have that replay spooled up. Why don't we take a look and see what exactly happened so we can get a closer look at this. Let's go to it. It starts with Grossman out in front and, and Sipla taking a peek underneath. They get together right in front of Phil Reed. And then it all, look at them, here they come. Yeah, so what, what happens here, Bill, is That's this is another thing of, with it with it being off camber, it, uh, the car is coming out of their loose, so you're really concentrated on controlling the car. And so many drivers were side by side with one another. They were paying attention to that. They maybe could have seen that, uh, that yellow flag at the last second, but honestly, it doesn't always give you great information. That's, that's why so many look like they looked a little silly piling into it. Go up front because there's a pass for the lead as Osterkamp gets underneath Ke uh, Patrick Kessler. And these two are teammates too. So I think with the huge gap that they've got back to Summers for now, this is what we're going to see for most of this race. Just swapping back and forth, making sure they get a gap, and then they'll settle who gets to win in maybe the final lap or two. So just to run down what's going on, you have Osterkamp and Kessler, those two teammates for Sim RC. They also lead in the team championship. They're out in front, one, two. Summers has got around Kerry Nolden. They race third and fourth. Yeah, and they're just ahead of who we were watching earlier, Phil Reed and Lubomir Morris. Reed has stretched away. He's got over a second over Morris, which is still able to, to bring Morris in, but not enough for a pass. So he's got to push hard in this next couple corners to try and break that draft before they get to the backstretch. And we had so many cars that have taken a pit stop. Now we really don't know what their status is because it's a really big pit window in this, Joe. They could have come in, got a little repairs done. They, they could surprise us, they could work up. They will not need to come in for another stop. Yeah, and that's that's where I corrected myself a little bit earlier when we were talking about how many cars made it through. I remembered, oh yeah, they can they can pit on the first lap if they want. So it, like you said, it's just more of an inconvenience. They will have lost some time probably trying to thread the needle. Even if they didn't hit anybody, they'd have to slow to try and get through the cars flying around. Uh, so it hurt them slightly. Uh, the real question is if they can make that up now that they've got clean air. Of all the cars that have made a stop, it is Daniel Morris, who is the leader. Just coming around to finish his lap. He's uh, just about half a lap back from our leaders. And we're seeing uh, roughly 30 second stops for most drivers, honestly. Show back up and look at this battle for third. This is Summers and Nolden. They've been going at it the whole race. I believe it's uh, Summers and Reed uh, fighting. Oh, uh, P2, I guess. But we're watching on Charlie Summers. He is uh, just behind, yeah, Kerry Nolden at the moment. Sorry about that. Got confused. I was... See, the, the wreck even screwed me up. There you go. 
Well, you, let's talk while you were looking at Nolden back there. His teammate is Phil Reed. They race for AOR. What color are they this season? Are they orange? Something like that. I can never remember what color they choose yeah, to race. Orange and yeah. gray. The car is we ride on Charlie Summers here, but but uh, Reed and Nolden, they're trying to do well in that team championship as well. They are sandwiching right now, Charlie Summers. Yep, number 350. This is where you want that launch off the first corner. And you gotta watch out. You see both of them running over that curve. They can get away with that bill, but what you don't want to do is straddle that curve. I found that I actually started to lose time if I didn't go all the way one way or the other. And uh, you'll probably notice that the fast drivers have sussed that out. Both, uh, both these packs are switching up. Go ahead, Bill. We'll jump back. Our director wants to take us back to P14 real quick. I guess we're looking here at Tom Van Hoyman. He's being chased by Urka Lindstrom. Of course, Urka has his team in that championship hunt as well, sitting in fifth. And these two are second and third of the drivers who have pitted so far. So they could still be up in this mix. And that was a great illustration right there of what I was just talking about. I saw that uh, Lindstrom stayed to the right and Van Hoyman went all the way to the left. Neither of them stayed right on top of the white. And I think we're gonna have the pass made here. Gets a good run, gets it finished. This is easy and, and probably in their best interest. Uh, again, because like I said, they've they lost a little bit of time trying to go through that wreck. So they're probably playing nice right now. You could see that Van Hoyman could have maybe ducked his nose inside of Lindstrom and decided not to, just because they would lose time if they race side by side through that corner. They continue to race there and that starts to cool off. Quickly, let's look at 10th position. This is Stu Milne. The reason I want to talk about him he is our hard charger. He does not be able. He was not able to put in a qualifying time. I mean, can we really can we really figure out the hard charger until we're done on this one? Because yeah, there's there's a lot of cars that are going to still have pitted that are going to go around him. So maybe a little bit of a faux position here. Nevertheless, I've been in his position when I'm racing. When I started way back there and I'm in tenth, I yell for GSRC to give me a little love. It feels good regardless. The, the dizzying heights of 10th place. Yeah. Another lead change, Bill, don't really need to go to it, but uh, Osterkamp and Kessler is now being led by the 29 of Osterkamp. Yeah. Just dancing right now. Now, not quite as friendly what's going up for between first as the one going on for third. This is Kerry Nolden and Summers. They have swapped position probably four times since this race started. Yeah, which surprises me because they can see that they're within two seconds of Oysterkamp and Kessler. I, I would think that those two would try to work together and not really hold each other up too much so that they could regain that gap. And they possibly could if they play it right. They got about two and a half seconds back to Phil Reed, who's doing his best to get to him. Reed was in that battle with Lubomir Morris, but he has left Morris behind. Yeah, Morris could have been up in this as well. And I mean, the draft can only help you so much. You do have to drive the rest of the lap. Lubomir doesn't really seem to have the pace to hold on at the tail of Phil Reed. He's now got that to over two seconds. Okay, Matty Sippla pits from seventh position. Now, this is going to be interesting to see how he comes out. This will give us a good indication, Joe of where those guys who took those early stops, how they're gonna, uh, how they're gonna fare. Cause Cipla was close to the leaders. Absolutely. And he's got to watch out on this pit exit too, Bill. Uh, even though it's pretty easy to get out there in these cars, you don't have to uh, lift heading through the right hander. What you do have to watch out for is where you're allowed to blend in. There's that white line and white, Watkins Glen is very strict on iRacing on when you can take off. So you'll see him stay to the right all the way until that line ends so that he doesn't get a black flag. And there goes Daniel Morris. Sipla is out. And Sipla's got about seven seconds on Morris. So looks like uh, they are going to be a little bit down if you were involved in that incident and took that early stop. Morris, of course, uh, started this race 
in uh, P17, but he has gained position. He is in 13th. Some of those drivers have elected to just uh, end their day. So with that said, I want to talk about a few more sleepers here. The guy in seventh right now. We've seen him on best today. This is Alain Tessier, the French driver. He's got about two seconds on the Rolling Thunder, Evan Emery. Yep, coming through the penultimate turn into the final turn. And uh, along with him having uh, started this one in 16th, we should see him probably, I'm thinking actually down maybe 13th, 14th when he comes back out. I believe he was, yeah, he was behind Cipola, so. Oh, Osterkamp, Osterkamp with a big problem in turn one. Right in front of the cars we were just looking at, just an unforced error right in front of his teammate. Now, he, let's see, did he hit anything? I don't think so, unless no. the curve counts. No, Man, no, he-, he... Oh, Those curves there, huh? He, uh, yeah, he got it turned around. That cost him a lot of time having to do a nice little 12 point turn there. You could see he just caught that curb, like you said. It's so easy to do. It's greedy. It's easy to get greedy because that's a big flat curb, but it's on a different embankment than what you've got for the rest of the corner, which is why the car gets thrown off like that. Uh, even the best can fall susceptible to it. So we were talking about Evan Emery being in eighth position. Well, now he's moved up to seventh with Osterkamp's spin, but he's got Renee right behind him. And yeah, maybe, a, maybe steaming a bit too. <laughs> uh, he's he's got to keep from letting the red miss make him make more mistakes, though. He should be able to dispose of Emre pretty easily, uh, at least at first. But Emre could try and ride his coattails back up through the field. My, uh, what I really wonder is how far uh, Renee can go to get back up to the front. Because right now, let's see, I'm not getting a gap to the leader from him. Because he was turned around for a long time. Yeah, it took him a really long time to get that straightened out. Oof, yeah, he's a whole 15 and a half seconds back. That's that's a lot of time to gain on someone like Kessler. All right, he's going to come in. Now, this is going to be interesting to see how he fares in relation to Cipolla. I would not be surprised if Matty doesn't get him. Yeah, I think Maddie was within those 15 seconds, if yeah. I'm honest. He's coming out of the penultimate turn. And this right-hander, it's another one with a lot of banking in it. You really want to push it in this car, but oof, it, it's really hard to keep your foot planted if you feel it understeering because of how close that Oster wall is. Oster Camp is rolling, but Sipla's going to have the momentum. Ah, Oster oh, Camp's out of him. He's first. got him. Yep. That makes Renee our highest pitter now. You know what? He was, uh, Osterkamp was stuck behind Evan Emery. So now Emery in seventh. He's got to put in some hot laps and try to outpace <laughs> Renee Osterkamp. Good luck, Evan. <laughs> uh, up at the front, I'm now curious too to see if Patrick Kessler will be able to hold that gap over Summers and Morgan. Right. And I think they've actually been gaining on him. Let me check the lap times here. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, they yeah. are coming. They got it under two seconds now. I think them doing their little waltz is going to run down the guy out there doing a solo. So here's here's the interesting thing then. Renee's, uh, despite him not touching Kessler, Renee's incident hurt Kessler as well because that was pace that he lost now that he doesn't have, as you call him, his dancing partner. Indeed. And if you want to talk big picture, Lubomir Morris is in fifth. Osha can't have a hard day. We touched on it in the pre-race show, though. There's all those dreaded drop points, so Renee has a little bit of insurance in his pocket. Yeah, and, and that actually brings up a good point as we watch uh, Nolan going to overtake Summers here. Uh, the uh, At the start, you talked about how if he gets zero points. It's not even if he gets zero points. If he right. scores less than those 32 points, he still gets those 32 points. So uh, even, uh, I guess if anything, even if he doesn't score zero, he still finds himself uh, sitting very safe. And it's probably better if he scores zero because that keeps those pocket points uh, yeah. in his hand. But for Morris, at least he's using up some of them. He's got to use them up, so it'll help a little bit there. This battle is really, as we look, we're riding off the back of the... Uh, 
Yes, looking off the back of Kessler. Yeah, so they begin to run down and that gap. That's ah, two seconds now. Kessler's doing okay. Yeah, it looks like he's picked up his pace a little bit now. But one thing that I, I find fascinating and just goes to show how cool uh, like iRacing is as a sim is if you look at those wings at some of our other tracks, Bill, you can see how drastically different they look from that onboard cam. You can see how much they're tilted differently uh, that iRacing actually models the wing change. And it looks like Nolden's in. Hey, all right. I feel comfortable unless Kerry really botches his stop that he's going to get out in front of Ostercamp. Lubomir follows him. I don't know if Charlie Summers is happy about this because the two of them had a chance to run down Kessler. Kessler's opened it up to 2.4 now. So let's see where Rene is. Ostercamp. He heading should, towards the final corner. He should be well behind these guys. Yeah, uh, I would think. Pretty sure. Nolden's already out. He's rolling. He's going to come out right behind Stuart Milne. We talked about Milne. Hey, Stuart, you're up to six. <laughs> well, for a second. So Nolden, now our earliest pitter. And yeah, he should he should make easy meat of Stuart. And there he goes. We have 20 cars left after that first lap incident. So quite a few DNFs. Thomas Edwards, Leonard Sherry, Valteria Lander, David Santana is actually still in the pit, but I'm not sure that he'll get back out. He's been in there for 17 minutes. Josh Ladd is out, Simon Grossman, Nick Thyssen, Christopher Rigby, Gio Salito, and then we also have Ali Hay and Marty Pardo sitting in the pit lane. And the driver in 20th is Lucas Ferrani, but Luca, he's two laps down. Now this could change a little bit when the other cars make a stop. He might be able to get back on the lead lap. My timing and scoring doesn't show it. Has Luca made a pit stop yet? He he has, yes, but he, he has. was in there a long time. Yeah. I, I don't think he's gonna get a lap back. He might get it from one or two cars, but with the 30 to 35 second stops as our leaders now trundle down the pit lane, uh, they're not handing off enough time. It's, it's not a terribly long lap time in these cars, but yeah, I, I don't think you're going to lose a whole lap here just for pitting. Well, that turns the lead over to the French driver, Alain Tessier. Kessler's able to get out before Nolden, but not by a whole not lot. Look much. at this. Ooh, this actually might have been a good call by Nolden. Then. Yeah, maybe Nolden thought that Summers was hanging on to his coattails or because now Nolden has a as He's only 1.3 seconds back at Kessler, so he gained about seven tenths of a second, and he's got a little distance on Summers as well. Yeah, Nolan seems to have a little bit better pace when he is on his own. So that that bears fruit to what you were saying earlier, that those two were not working together. They were fighting and uh, keeping each other from being able to get to their full potential. At least in the case of Nolan, we know that's the case. So if Summers drops off, then, well, <laughs> He was just riding his coattails. So at this point, we're waiting on Tessier, Emre, and Tim Matsky and Boudelar, the only four who have not pitted yet, Bill. Here's our leader. We have seen him on best day. He has had some good events. Yeah, the Frenchman's been holding things down a couple times, and it looks like he's electing to pit now. You could see he stayed hugging to the inside. He didn't really need to do that as much since nobody was behind him, but that is usually a good sign that someone is pitting in when they don't take to the racing line to come around that corner long. Let's see, where's Kessler? He doesn't retake the lead yet because Emre stays out. In fact, the only one that pitted that time is Elaine. And where is he going to get back out? Looks like a top 10, very possible here yep. for Elaine. Right behind Renee Osterkamp, about a second and a half back. 
this is a this is going to be a really good day for a number of drivers because I th uh, Lane should also jump uh, Emre, Budalar, and Matsky. So that'll move him up to eighth place or seventh yeah. place. You talked about Tim Matsky. Let's go with him in eighth position right now as Lubomir Morris just got around him. Matsky still needs to pit. Morris gets that pass made. So Morris, well, you know, when, when Matsky gets out of the way, that's going to be interesting. It's going to be Morris right ahead of Osterkamp in the, in the standings. He'll have quite a gap. And I, th I think Osterkamp actually should be able to salvage something decent because he should also, let's see, I'm not sure if he'll get M. Ray. Actually, yes, he will, because he's 20 seconds behind. And uh, is Emery coming in this lap? Nope, looks like he's staying out. So three more spots for Rene. And uh, and we saw that he had the, what was it, a first and a fourth. So if he gets fifth, sixth place, that's not too bad. He, he probably is still going to be on the best of day as long as he finishes well in the sprint race. We look at Rene Osterkamp. Maskey finally does come in and make that stop. Now, here's the point I wanted to make in relationship to Emre and Lucas, Luca Varani. And why do we care so much about Varani? Well, right now, he's in 20th, and he is two laps down. But he's only about maybe 10 or 15 seconds behind Emre right now on the track. So I think he's going to get one of those laps mm. back when Emre comes in. I have bad news for you, though. He's also behind Patrick Kessler, who's on the same lap as Emre. <laughs> so, as oh. well as Nolden, Summers, uh, Budalar. So, yeah, Luca Verani, unfortunately, with that pit stop, is not going to be able to be regrid. It's going to be Scott Newton at this point. Scott, one of the drivers that uh, was involved in that early incident. And ironically, he gritted 21st uh, and finishing 19th. He's not going to be too far back from where he started or too far forward uh, from where he started. Oh, let's take a quick look right now at Stuart Milne. Talk about a save. Let's see if we can see Stuart. He's in 11th position right now. I thought this car was coming around. I really thought it was going to nose up into the wall, but then he was able to save it. Yeah, this was in the toe of the boot. Let's see if we can pull that replay up. Let's see, we're going to uh, bring this one here, and I'm with you. Wow, this is a monumental save to ride on board. Usually, you're right. If, if you do start spinning on this corner, you're just going to either come to a halt. <laughs> wow. Wow, and he just kept going, too. Yeah. Stu's a cool customer. And that's from, let's see, he's taken his stop. He started 31st. He's going to finish 11th at this rate. We only have 13 minutes to go. He does have, I think there's one or two fast guys behind him still trying to catch up. Guys like uh, Daniel Morris and uh, Tom Van Hoyman could gain on him. Okay, I want to go to second right now. Look at Kessler. Because sure enough, Nolden is now within within eight tenths of a second of him. Does Kerry have anything for Patrick? This is a race for second, but of course, Emre is out in front, but yeah, needs to stop. And most likely this time up the hill, through the S's and onto the backstretch, Bill, he's going to be close enough that that draft will reel him in to, I would guess, within roughly about three tenths. Uh, could be even closer than that. It all depends on how good of a run he gets versus uh, Nolden. So as we ride on board with Team OR Orange, I'd love it if we could stay on all the way to the end of backstretch just so yeah. we could see how much he able, he's able to gain. Things are kind of quiet out there right now, so this is a good opportunity to so ride on board with the British driver. This is where you want to back up the entry just slightly and then really put the power down. Get him to lose a little ground now. Kessler gets it up to a full second. 
wonder if Kessler's got less wing than Nolden, maybe then. Which surprises me. Wow. So, that's something we didn't take into account, though. The differences in setup yeah. in these cars. And boy, what a what a great call by Kessler to, to trim it out as much as he did then. Because, I mean, obviously he couldn't know that he'd be in this situation, but uh, one of the best things you can do as a driver is make yourself fast in a straight line because you're so much harder to pass that way. So with that cooling off a bit, let's drop back to eighth. We've been watching these two guys, Matty Sippola, and here comes Alain Tessier. And he's gaining on him. Yeah, and this, for the viewers who think that maybe this is a, a pit stop with the fresh tires, the tires don't really do too much when you take them in the car. You mostly just get them because uh, it'll be a mild improvement. Uh, so what you're seeing here with Tessier is on raw pace. It's not due to who pitted when and fresh tires or anything like that. After the first lap, the melee, things have settled down considerably. Well, we have a lot fewer cars out on track, yeah. so. <laughs> 20 versus 31, that's uh, that's Leader about a third in. of the field. Emre gonna try and find his stall, hands it back to Kessler finally. All right, boys, I wanna go right now to Luca Verani in 20th. Oh, that's your right though, Joe. I keep thinking that he's gonna get the lap back Come on, Soup, get with it. Yes, he's going to get the lap back from Imre. He's not going to get the lap back. Yeah, no, he, yes, he's, right? he's yeah. stuck two laps down. Yeah, all right. Interestingly, did Alexi Sorokin have an incident? Because he's... Oh, yes, he did. Just recently, maybe a little less than a minute ago, into the carousel. And this was of his own doing. I'm not entirely you know what? sure. This is a second incident because I have a make a mistake in corner one. So yeah. oh, oh yeah, you can see. I, I couldn't see from my uh, eye in the yeah. sky cam. Oh no, it was uh, it was on the first corner yep. in the ninety. Oh, I'm not sure if we'll be able to get it. Yeah. He uh, he and basically then, yeah. yeah he he basically went over the curb like I was talking about. The car got loose. Once he got into the grass on that exit, there was really no saving it. And that's important. He was in 19th position. He was set to be on the pole. He was within one lap. Yeah, looks like Scott Newton in, in 18th is gonna be inside of our newcomer here, Joe. Luke Barb? Loic, Loic Barb? Barb? Let's see, where yeah. is he from? He's French, so I'm, I'm, I'm probably botching that completely because I was never good at French. I hope it's Barbet. It could be, it could be. But yeah, uh, gonna start in the front row. He started in 19th, so he's about a mid-packer uh, here today. So I don't know that he'll be able to hold off the leaders, but he could get himself a decent finish with uh, being in front of a lot of guys up at the front. With just over eight minutes to go, things have really settled down. I was just about to say, Bill, does your handbook have anything about saying, you know, how to put tax on the track or uh, <laughs> a, a, a caution getting thrown or anything? Everybody's really just found their own little bit of space. This is the complete opposite, Bill, of what we usually see at Watkins Glen races. Everybody tends to be all on top of each other and, and having little draft uh, draft packs that they they're swapping positions or they're waiting in line waiting for the time that they think is right to really go on, on the attack and start getting by people there's none of that here then i want to talk about two drivers who are having a really good day we'll go to 10th position david botelar 29th racing in 10th it's got about two and a half seconds just under two and a half seconds to the guy we've spent a lot of time talking about today Stu Milne. Bill, 31st to 11th, and these are legitimate positions. The pit stops are done. And I can't remember if we mentioned it, but Boudelar had a penalty at the start. Yeah. Uh, so he had to start at the back of the grid because hey. of that. There's a guy making a move. Let's go to Matsky here. Tim Matsky, he goes around Luca Verani. That's not for position, but it was a pass on the track. Tim Matsky in 13th. <laughs> 
but another good day from 28th, another driver that didn't put in a qualifying time. Those guys who didn't put in a qualifying time, Joe, they, they were far enough back that they had time to react before they got to the chaos in front of them. Yeah, as long on as they were pay atten paying attention, and if there was any chatter on the radio, yeah, your, your ears would immediately perk up. And I don't know about these guys, but I would lift a little bit coming in there. <laughs> Up front, it is still Kessler, Nolden, and Summers. Nobody making inroads on each other. Phil Reed all by himself in fourth. Phil Reed having started this one in six, uh, jumps up a little bit for a fourth. Gonna be a good day for Team AOR Orange as they're running a second and fourth right now. Yeah, and we forget about that a lot of times, that this team championship is really important. And for some of these teams where they have a, a couple drivers where it's one driver's fast and one driver's slow, this is this is a great opportunity where if the fast one made it through, uh, or the fast one was ahead of it and the slow guy made it through the accident, uh, you could gain a chunk of points, especially if you're battling against other teams with a si similar situation where uh, they... Try as he might to gain ground on his uh, the guy he's chasing his prey, Rene Osterkamp. I guess he is, but Osterkamp is just one spot back. Yeah, that's a that's a hard ask to hold yeah. off a, a charging Osterkamp, especially one who's trying to make up for a mistake and is kind of kicking himself because you know he's going to be aggressive to try and get up there. Osterkamp, like I said, isn't in too bad of a spot in sixth place. He's still a decent amount of points, just not as many as he would like here for the feature, since the feature does count for more than the sprint. And more bad news for Morris is when they do regrid, Osterkamp will be in front of him since he's going to finish behind him in the feature race. There's Rene, two-time champion, looking to get his third. I, I honestly, if you ask me, Bill, I think he's on his way to it because... We're getting towards the end of the season now, and yeah. they do have those drop weeks. You saw how many he has in his pocket. He, you know, I really, as much as we just uh, put it on him like, oh, he's had a bad start to the season, he's rebounded. He's come back. He's had great results. He's leading the championship now. He's found consistency. He's going to be hard to overtake because here, even on a bad day where he does make a mistake, he's looking like he could still come away without too bad of a blow. And he's fended off a lot of newcomers stabbing at him. Uh, uh, Valteria Lander has been uh, making a move in there. You know, the, the new guys that show up every once in a while. The guy a couple rounds ago that did the double. Uh, he's able to, uh, Ostercamp's still able to hang in there. Well, he is going to lose points to Reed and Morris, who are behind him. But Stefan Herman, uh, where is Herman actually? He out already, or did he even show up? Oh, no, he wasn't. Yeah. He wasn't even here, so it's a for sure a zero for him. Grossman did show up, and unfortunately, was a part of that wreck. With three minutes to go, let's look at the driver in 17th. Our newcomer, Loic Butterbe. I'm going to go with on this one. We'll see if maybe he'll come in and talk to us between the races. Why do we care about him? Well, he's gonna be outside of row one if he has the intestinal fortitude to actually go ahead and grid on the regrid. Well, sometimes uh, not knowing things really doesn't alert <laughs> you to the dangers. <laughs> so yeah. it might be a case where he gets regrid and he thinks, oh, sweet, you know, I'll be on the front row. So this will be a, a fun race, not realizing that he's gonna be swamped over the next few corners. <laughs> Two and a half minutes of racing to go. Kerry Noland not able to make any kind of gains on Patrick Kessler. Kessler only a mistake from Patrick. I think it's going to get Nolden back in there. And, you know, honestly, I think this isn't strictly down to uh, the setup between Kessler and Nolden. I think Kessler saw him coming and probably turned up the wick a little bit uh, to, to try and hold him back. These cars do cause a little bit of a wake on them. So uh, if someone gets close to you and you're pushing hard, you can make their life difficult uh, if they try to pass you. And I kind of wonder if maybe Nolden is getting a bit of that buffeting and uh, just can't get the car that little bit closer he needs to use that slipstream to its full effect. I'll tell you, the checkered flag cannot come soon enough for Lubomir Morris as 
Osterkamp continues to close. He's got it down to just a tick over one and a half seconds. But I think he's going to run out of laps. Yeah, it'll it'll take a mistake from Lubomir at this point for him to really get an opportunity because we've got the white flag next time by. So this is it. It's been uh, a bit of an odd one for a Watkins Glen race, but I think it's going to give us a very fascinating uh, sprint race for the second half of today. I th I Ooh. think that Ooh. first lap. Stuart, oh. Stuart Milne had a problem. He's missing his nose and he's in the pit lane. Oh, this Big didn't happen hit. too long ago. Yeah, this was in the, uh, the penultimate corner. Oh, a great look if we can get an on board from Daniel Morris if we have time. That may be the best look, actually. What? Here goes Daniel Back Morris going right by Daniel. A little bit more. Yeah. Woo. It's awful tight. So I, I did this myself in the, in the warm up earlier when I was getting a feel for how these cars are around this track. You can see it just starts to get loose because he doesn't have a lot of downforce. And then unfortunately, there's no saving it. Oh my God, Daniel just about had a heart attack. To the leader as it is Patrick Kessler coming across the line, picking up the win. Uh, no, Nolan that's the white flag. Second. Oh, is that the white flag? Oh, that's why we were. That's the white flag. That's why our director was taking <laughs> Had me worried there. That's right. If there's still time on the clock, it can't be over, Soup. <laughs> I've done this before. I, I'm but... sure he wishes it was over, yeah. I, you know. Well, that makes me want to go back and look at Lupamir Morris then. As Osterkamp has knocked off another second. And he's still, he's going to have to push hard. This is the last one. Yeah. I don't know. He, he's going to have to do something desperate in the final few corners, I think. I, I don't think Renee's quite close enough. Even down that backstretch, he only gained about two to three tenths. This is interesting here. This is Scott Newton, who's currently in 18th position, one lap down eligible to sit on the pole if he can stay ahead of Kessler. Joe, the rules say Newton has he's, to get no, out He's pulling way. over. Yeah, yeah. Yep. He's not He's not going to hold him up. And and poor Newton. Kessler couldn't hold up because he's no. racing Molden right behind him right now. But here we go, Bill. As they come into that final corner. Now, I practiced it once already, so I should be good at it this time. Let's give round number eight of the feature race in the Apex Online Racing to Patrick Kessler. Ooh, it was awful tight. One more lap and Morris would have lost this to Osterkamp. <laughs> he comes across about six tenths of a second ahead of Osterkamp. Man, what a run by Tessier. Going to get eighth place starting from 16th. That is a great heart charger. And Morris and Tim Matsky, a little bit of a battle at the end, but Matsky just a little bit too far back. Morris has got this corner easily and claims himself a nice little 11. And the driver last on the lead lap, on the lead lap, mind you, Luca Barbe. He's going to be our pole sitter. Loic Barbe. Loic. Let's learn his name because we're going to get to talk about it a lot when we go to the sprint race. What an introduction this is going to be if this if this is his actual first race with AOR. All right. Well, you know, this is a doubleheader, and that means the best part of any doubleheader event is that break in between. It's that perfect blend post-race high and the pre-race jitters. We're going to take a short break, but don't go far. We'll be back maybe to talk to some of the drivers, run down the final standings of this feature race, and get all of our ducks in a row for the sprint that'll follow shortly. Don't go far. Can
sanctioned by Apex Online Racing. You're watching the Global Sim Racing Channel's coverage of the Formula Renault 2.0 Season 11 Championship. It's round number eight from Watkins Glen. The feature race is in the books. Let's give you those standings right now. He started in second when his teammate Rene Osterkamp made a mistake. Patrick Kessler had the lead all to himself, and he brings it home getting first position. Kerry Nolden tries he might, could only get second. Charlie Summers has to settle for the final podium spot. Phil Reed picks up a couple spots in fourth position. Lubomir Morris will gain a few points on Rene Osterkamp in the standings as they come home fifth and sixth respectively. Matty Sipla had a nice run. After starting fourth, he was able to rebound into seventh after a mistake. Alain Tessier in eighth position. Rolling Feather, Evan Emery in ninth. Rounding out the top 10, it's Dave Boutelarjo. Daniel Morris finished in 11th with Tim Matsky behind him in 12th. Tom Van Hoyman goes from 18th to 13th. Connor Ryan gets 14th today, having started in 27th. He didn't qualify. Erko Lindstrom finished in 15th today with Loic Barbie going to be our driver uh, who gets regrid on the pole from 16th position. Poor Scott Newton was just a few corners away from being on that pole. Maybe he didn't want it. Who knows? He'll start from 17th. Uh, Luca Verani will start from, or will be P18 on the uh, regroup for the sprint race with Stuart Milne finishing 19th and Alexis Sorokin finishing 20th. From here on out, all the drivers are 21 laps down plus. Thomas Edward, Marty Pardo, Leonard Sherry, David Santana, Simon Grossman. Not a good day for the uh, Sim RC retro driver. Christopher Rigby, Alistair Hay. Remember, he was doing really great, had his team up inside the top five. Not a lot of points scored here. Nick Dyson in 28th. Another fast driver from Valtteri and Lander caught up in that early incident. Josh Ladd, too. They go 29th and 30th. All right. That is your finishing order. And we have nobody here for interview. Oh, we do. We do indeed. Here we go. So we're going to talk to And we bring in the man who came in in second, Kerry Nolden. Going to uh, Kerry, you got a copy? Yeah. Evening, guys. Boy, you, you, uh, you thought maybe you could run down Kessler when when Osterkamp left him there, but uh, he just couldn't catch him. <sighs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a fun race though to catch him. We were really close in the end, really, um, but just kind of we've been touching distance, but he just had enough in hand. Um, yeah, it was quite an interesting race all the way through. I think that first half of the race was uh, more like a chess match, I think, really. Um, me and Charlie were, were, were drafting each other, trying to catch up um, after the uh, the crash kind of split everyone up a little bit on that one. Um, yeah, and we just tried to draft past each other. And I mean, the draft is like nearly a second per lap. Uh, so it just made sense to, to stick together. Um, unfortunately, the uh, CMRC guys picked up on that as well pretty quickly so um yeah it was a bit of a stalemate um and then Rene crashed obviously or had his uh his moment and we thought okay yeah now now we've got a chance let's let's start closing the gap um and then you know we were drafting in, and we had to pit which was probably the worst thing to happen to us i think um because it split us up a little bit i thought i could kind of get close so i actually caught kessler up a little bit but um, i think charlie lost out over the pit phase um and that kind of sealed it, really. Um, the choice for me was either I can try and push Kessler or I can drop back and me and Charlie can go uh, try towing each other back towards him again. But the gap, I think, was a bit too big and we just ran out of time in the end. So I had to go for it. But credit to, to Patrick. His pace was really strong, especially in those laps where we were trying to catch him as well um, together. Um, yeah, and second again, I, I think this is my fourth one in the feature race. Um, not quite the win uh, that I want, but it, it is what it is. It's a good, it was a good race. It was great to go up against the CMRC guys today and have the pace. Let me just follow up on, on the setup strategy as far as fuel goes. So did you have to pit because you were out of fuel? You, you put in just enough to go that far, and then you put in the rest that it doesn't cost you while you're taking your stop? Or could you yeah. have gone farther? Yeah, exactly. I, I, no, we, we, we stopped more or less um, right. when we were, were on the uh, on the limit. Um, we tried to short fuel um, or ha have less fuel. This is right. one of the, the, the lowest fuel counts in, in, whole, in the whole season. So um, we, we ran a shorter fuel tank at the start 
and um, just to give us the lap time, if anything, because um, the, the car is a bit more lethargic with with a bit more fuel in. So yeah, we we tried to minimise the amount of time, the amount of fuel that we had. Um, obviously, um, the pit stop we weren't going to lose too much. I think um, putting in just a tiny bit extra. Um, but yeah, I think everyone was all in the same position. Though. Got it. Well, thanks for that tip. Good luck. Uh, you, you're not going to be back too far. You're back in, I guess, going to be about uh, 14th spot or so. So you should be uh, see what you can do, get a good finish in this sprint race. Yeah, still in the danger zone. But um, <laughs> yeah, should be fun. <laughs> All right, Kerry. Good luck. That's Kerry Nolden, our runner-up finisher. Joe? Up next, we have Luca Verani, who came home 18th, but sadly will not be regrid. Luca, it looked like maybe you dodged a bullet in the first corner, only to uh, find a brick wall there <laughs> later on in the lap. Hello, guys. Yeah, a little disappointed. It's actually the fourth time that I slow down to avoid the trouble ahead and I get uh, hit from behind. This time, uh, we had yellow flags and the spotter calling uh, cars left and right in the most dangerous corner of the track. So I slowed down. I actually had a clean path uh, ahead of me, but uh, sadly the car be behind accelerated full speed out of the corner and uh, ran me over. It's a pity. You just need to be a little more patient, a little more careful at the start, and uh, you have uh, 24 more laps to sort it out. Yeah, especially at a track like this. Knowing that uh, that you're going to at least be a little bit farther up the order than where you started uh, the last race, do you feel it'll be easier to try and make up some positions here in the sprint, or do you think it'll be even worse? No, it was the opposite. Uh, I botched qualifying. That was interesting, actually. I, so usually on lap one, I take it easy. But two corners from the end, I caught a glimpse of the lap time. I thought, wait, I'm doing 42.5 on lap one. I'm doing great. And by doing so, I actually went wide and crashed my car. So that was good and smart. Uh, now, instead, uh, I will be surrounded by faster guys. So, nah, I don't think that I will gain places. All right. Well, best of luck to you. Hopefully, this got uh, the jitters out for most people uh, as far as big accidents go, and uh, hopefully you get a decent result in the sprint then. Well, we'll see. Uh, what matters is uh, having fun. I really don't care about the results. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, as long as you have fun, then uh, we're having fun. We certainly enjoy calling these races, so we'll see you in a few moments. See you guys. Bye. The Luca Verani, 18th out there here in the feature, Bill. Uh, I think that's going to finish it up, at least for now. You know, the racing is great here, but for me, the highlight of this broadcast is between when Luca comes in and does an interview. I just smile ear to ear, man. He's, just, he's fun to talk to. All right, with that said, we're going to take another short break and get all of our ducks in a row. Luca, Joe, and I will all be back as we're going to bring you the sprint race in a few minutes. Don't go far.
This is the Global Sim Racing Channel's coverage of Apex Online Racing's Formula 0 2.0 Season 11 Championship. It's round number eight from Watkins Glen. This is a doubleheader event. The feature race is in the book. So now we turn our attention to the always exciting shorter sprint race. Joe, how does this work? Well, as the name sprint implies, the distance is a lot shorter. It's only 25 minutes compared to the 40, so just a little over half. Now, we've talked about it a lot, how the grid is determined, that inversion. That means a rookie now is going to be up on the pole. We'll see how he deals with it. The pit stops, well, there are none on this one because of it being shorter. Uh, they just don't need the fuel, they don't need the tires, and it's not required in the rules. So it's straight from the green flag to the checkers for these guys, unless they have some serious problems. Because it's shorter, they have an incident cap, and uh, instead of being 15 like the last one, it is now 13 before they get disqualified. And like I said, fewer points on tap for this one, 12 less for the win, which means it's a lot more important to do well in the feature, but we've seen time and time and again, Bill, that even if you have a good finish in the feature, both in the best of day and in the overall season, it's important that you at least finish with an average finish, even if you don't take a win here in the sprint. That's why every one of those positions that Rene Osterkamp was able to salvage as he came home in sixth, very, very important. Joe, let's talk about the track in the first couple quarters as that's always interesting when we have one of these sprint races where maybe the slower drivers are up front and the faster drivers are behind. Uh, what do you think for the layout of the track? Uh, does it help or is this a tough one? Uh, it, it can make it a little bit sketchy, to be honest, because you can see there in the background of the shot that we're looking at, the walls go right up to the edge of the track. Uh, so the basically, it's it's almost like a street course at, at the top of the S's section. And for most of the S, S's section, if we're honest, where there's, there's no place to go if something happens. And if everybody's trying to fan out and go around each other, you could have problems. You could actually have a track blockage. This has happened in real life before as well, where races stopped because of it. Um, so drivers might want to be patient, like Luca was saying, where uh, don't stress so much about getting by immediately. Wait for the safe position where you know you can make the pass, where you both survive, and then go on. Don't do something hurriedly without thinking it through. You know, I always watch this track, and I, I always feel corner number one, why don't they just go ahead and repaint it and put the white lines out there where the racing line is? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's, a, it's, it's like they're racing I'm in the parking lot here. Uh, well, this is where I become a, an old grumpy man and say that I liked it better when they had the grass out there. But I know it's, I know it's for safety reasons. I guess here in the sim, I, I wish we could have an old version where uh, it wasn't paved. Because I, I, I remember being younger in, in the days when they had the grass out there and it was it was quite a bit of a challenge now it just kind of it's still it's tough it's a challenge in the sense that it's hard to get it right and get the speed but it doesn't punish uh yeah. all, all it does especially with that back stretch if you just don't get that great of an exit and you're behind the car most cars here on iRacing you're going to draft right back up to them and it's there's nothing really lost other than maybe an opportunity to pass no qualifying going on as this is just simply Everyone putting in practice time. The grid is set by the results of the feature race. What about the weather? Well, that this carries over. It's the same weather they had before, so really don't have much to worry about there. I think it's interesting, Joe. We talked to Kerry Nolden. The strategy of not starting the race with a, with enough fuel to get to the end. He he puts only enough that when he makes his pit stop, he can put a little more in. It doesn't cost him any time. That's why uh, uh, some of these guys who can go to the very end, they start with uh, all the fuel they need. Yeah, and, and it's kind of one of those things where it's like, well, how do you want things to play for you? Do you want it to be a very open strategy? If you do, then you put as much fuel in as you can, but it is gonna weigh the car down a little bit, it makes you a little bit slower. Obviously it shortens your pit stop by a lot, uh, but I, I mean, like I said, it's a trade-off. It's how do you wanna play this race? If you know exactly how you want this strategy to go and you think it's gonna go exactly as you planned, which I'll give a hint to anybody who is an aspiring <laughs> racing driver, it won't, uh, then yeah, you know, take that risk and, and uh, only put as much in as you, you can eat and, and uh, pit exactly when you think you're going to and, and try to make every lap a qualifying lap. But 
it's i'm i'm sorry i'm not of the level of a driver who can do that who can just pump out those laps you know every time and, and just be perfect some some of these guys can and if they can more power to them but it's limiting maybe i just maybe maybe the fuel is more important than i realized but i would have had to think if summers and nolden had a full tank of fuel and could have ran together for longer they had to come in and, and once they pitted they lost touch with each other and they had no chance of running down kessler would have been nice to see what could have happened if those two could have stayed together yeah it it would have been a little bit more fascinating at least we would have something to kind of talk about and see how it would have played out at the end but i mean ifs ands or buts you know or yeah. could have would have should is it's uh, it, racing's racing at the end of the day you get what happens and that's what we love about this because bill we just don't know what's going to happen if ifs were fifths we'd all be drunk is what my dad used to say <laughs> let's talk about uh let's talk about this rookie uh this is joe you know what there are there are a few parts in in these sim races where i can speak from experience to give some stuff i'll tell you right now his heart's pounding he does he, it's settling in on him he realizes oh my goodness i'm going to be on the pole <laughs> do I really want to be there? Yes, you do. Go out there and keep the car in a straight line and they'll get around you. Well, you know, and I talked about this in previous broadcasts. I think it's a good thing if you get out there because that gives you experience you don't always get uh, as a, a, I don't want to say a slower driver, but a driver who's, who leads less often. Uh, to be up at the front gives you a lot of psychological experience that you can't get any other way. There's nothing like having pressure put on you and figuring out how do I mentally deal with this the back marker united meetings we like to call it pace challenged that ah, okay that's the term but uh what you really want to do you just don't want to make a mistake is, it's okay to be slow just keep it going pointed in the right direction is is, is snail considered a racing slur is that oh we not don't we do not like that no that's okay uh, okay <laughs> that's that's offensive and we might have to send you some counseling if you use that too often all right all right it looks like checkers out so about to get the grid here all right hopefully all the drivers are going to return got back into the session and we'll get that up as soon as i racing populates the grid for us we'll run it down and we got it now okay look barbe on the pole inside of connor ryan a veteran tom van hoyman and tim matsky make up row two daniel morris he could be fast maybe a win for him david butelar also in sixth position rolling thunder evan emory in seventh Alan Tesha in eighth position. Matty Sipla really quick in ninth, just ahead of Renee goes to Camp Park points. Lubomir Morris will start at 11th. Phil Reed has a good chance on this one, starting from 12th. Charlie Summers as well in 13th. Then you've got Kerry Nolden in P14, Patrick Kessler in 15th, uh, and Scott Newton, the first one not to be regrid, starting 16th. Luca Verani starts 17th with Stuart Mill in 18th. 19th is Alexi Sorokin, and 20th is Thomas Edwards. Black Jack is Marty Pardo, Leonard Sherry in the double duck spot, David Santana, Simon Grossman, 23rd and 24th, Christopher Wrigley, Alistair Hay, Nick Thiessen, Josh Led, Johnny Saletto, Erka Lindstrom, and Vitaria Lander back in the very end. They're off! Gather up the chickens, take cover behind the cows, the horses are out of the barn. What kind of jump did the rookie get? He's getting swallowed up on both sides. That's Matsky on the top. Oh, I'm sorry, wait a minute. There we go, we got it now. Barbie fended off Connor Ryan. Yep, he's right next to him, and they're gonna be side by side up the hill, which is bad news for them because they've got Tim Matsky having a huge hole in the air cut ahead of him which actually might get an even bigger hole here because look at Tom Van Hoyman gonna go side by side. Boy, the breaking down in the carousel is gonna be fascinating to see who comes out the other side, Bill. All right, let's see what the rookie could do under breaking. He's got the veteran of Connor Ryan on the outside. Ryan's gonna get first position. Barbie in second, Matsky in third. They're all coming. Tom Van Hoyman in fifth. Where's the big names back behind? Butelar and Emre are side by side. Simple as it is. They're Emre. clean. Yeah, around the outside, Boudelar. Now, oh, are they gonna go three wide? Sipola and Summers, this is not good, down in the toe of the boot. And it looks like is gonna come out the worst, but they do at least survive it. Not often that you see that. You're looking at him farther back, Osterkamp in in 10th position is looking for somewhere to go. He's got Sipola and Summers in front of him, two big names. The fast drivers are coming. And I think we've already had an incident. Oh, it, yeah, it was a big incident towards the back. We'll get back to it later, but uh, it involved Ali Hay, 
uh, coming down to the toe of the boot where basically cars unfortunately kind of scattered into each other. Rigby involved in it. Uh, Alexi Soroykin involved in that one as well. Meanwhile, up front, Connor Ryan trying to put some distance between him and the guys who are chasing him because the big names are coming. How about our pole sitter? Look, Barbie hanging on in second. The question is, how long? It was a lot calmer of a start. We only had four cars I'm seeing take to the pit lane after uh, that incident. Five, excuse me. So I kind of wonder if we're going to start to see them get swallowed on this part of the track here, the backstretch, Bill. Let's quickly go to six. This is Charlie Summer. He's our first big name driver. He continues to make his way through. He gets around Evan Emre. Next up, Daniel Morris. Oh my goodness, but up in fourth position. It is a pinata full of bees up there. They get it sorted out. Van Hoyman looking to get around Tim Matsky. They're being held up by Barbie. Yeah, and Matsky and Van Hoyman trying everything they can. They almost went three wide down towards the chute, but thought better of it. And poor Van Hoyman gets a horrible run up the hill. This is the last place you want to be slow to the gas, Bill. Charlie Summers is going to get around Morris. Careful, Charlie. These guys are going to be a little bit tricky. Summers gets to the inside of Van Hoyman. Moves Summers up into fourth position. I think if he closes it, meanwhile, up in front on the outside, it's going to be Batsky and Barbie side by side. And behind them, we saw Charlie take it around the outside of Van Hoyman. Another one around the outside there is Matsky holds off Barbie in that second to last corner. But I think this race is going to belong to Charlie Summers. He is on a tear and he is determined right now, Bill. Our leader, Connor Ryan, saying, boys, hold him back. Charlie Summers gets third position now. Just Bill. one more driver between him and the Bill, this is this is a finger in the dam. They, uh, there is not nothing holding back Charlie Summers. I, I, he's already up to third. He's going to make easy pickings of Tim Matsky here. You can see as we ride on board with Van Hoyman, he's in a battle of his own side by side now. And they're going to go three wide. Oh my goodness, that's Barbie on the outside. Van Hoyman now peeking in there is Imre. Getting the best of it out of that corner, shooting out like toothpaste through the tube. That's Von Hoyman. Emre in fifth, Barbie back to sixth. Very important, Summers did get that second place, and now he's got about a second to make up on Connor Ryan. And the next car back, really, that I think has a good yep. chance of catching him is in seventh, Osterkamp. Let's go to Osterkamp right now as he continues to work through Loic Barbie here, who's fallen back to sixth position. Barbie doing a good job, though, keeping the car going straight. There are four, three cars right in front of Osterkamp. Van Hoyman, Imre, and Barbie. Imre goes underneath Van Hoyman. They continue to go side by side. Osterkamp's going to have a good run here. I think he's going to get Barbie, but nowhere else to put the car. Yep. He's... Whoa! Oh. Is that a bobble, I think, from Van Hoyman? And everybody tries to find a way around. Thankfully, we didn't have an incident like we saw earlier. But that actually helped Osterkamp. He slides through with ease, now up to fifth. Kerry Nolden trying to find his way through as he gets into seventh position. Charlie Summers knows, knows they're coming, and he's right behind Ryan now. Yeah, he's got about half a second. I, I honestly think the draft should allow him to get by. Uh, but looking at Osterkamp, he's got about three seconds with 19 minutes left in this race. Oh, and Loic. Oh, he fell to the and, pressure. And while this goes on, there is a pass for the lead. There's Barbie. Looks like uh, Charlie Summers takes the lead. You want to do the replay now, director? Okay. Looks like we we lost the replay, but uh, yeah, Summers took that pretty much as I expected, just slipstream by. But here's the important thing: two and a half seconds back to Renee Osterkamp. And I was about to say, 19 minutes left on the clock, Bill. It's going to be really hard for Summers. He's fast, but I don't think he's that fast that he can hold that number 29. Can we go to seventh real quick? This is Phil Reed working around the outside of Tom Van Hoyman. Reed right. gets it done. Van Hoyman's having a hell of a time trying to hold people off. He's trying his hardest. He's giving it his best, but he just 
He doesn't have the pace. He's really got to work on his good corner exits. See right there, just way too wide around there. And you can see how much it cost him to Sipola behind him. And Phil nearly ending his race. Oh, we got a big incident. Lubomir oh. Morris. Oh, this is, this. A, this is a nasty one. Tessie involved in it as well. David Boudelar started that one off. He just understeer wide. And yeah, it was it was uh, Morris and Tessier who just kind of crowded into him. The reason this corner is so hard, Bill, you can see from the onboard, it's it's got a crest, so you're losing a little bit of grip. It's also slightly off camber. And then right when you want to get to the power, there's very little grip coming off this corner and the walls are closed. So it just all comes together to be this most dangerous turn on the circuit. Luca Barani also got a piece of that one as we look at this battle. Here comes Osterkamp now. Looking to get this. In fact, he's got the pass made on Matsky. Osterkamp up in the third. He's got about a second to get to Connor Ryan. Charlie Summer doing his very best to run away. Joe, remember Summers and Osterkamp were pretty equally paced in the uh, sprint race, uh, the feature race earlier. Yeah, but even though Osterkamp has had to deal with traffic, he's chopped off half a second on Charlie Summers. I'm pretty certain that Osterkamp is going to be able to at least get to him. Like you said, passing might be another one, but I would not bet, bet against Osterkamp. Let's quickly go back to ninth position. We continue to jump you around here in the sprint race. This is Tom Van Hoyman, but he's got some big names behind him. Patrick Kessler, Simon Grossman, right there looking for some way around. The first yellow car is Kessler for CMRC, Grossman CMRC Retro, similar painted cars, trying to get around Van Hoyman. Oh, right now, <laughs> oof, as he pokes and prods. Osterkamp's actually caught the second place driver. I think he's about to make another overtake soon. There, we'll jump to it. You can see Kessler making the pass on Van Hoyman. He gets that done. Yeah, it, it was uh, Connor Ryan just went way too deep yep. into the 90. And he didn't even need the draft, honestly. Osterkamp was a lot smoother through there. They've also got some competition coming behind them. Uh, Matsky has Kerry Molden passing and keeping touch. Side by side is, uh, you see, in the very back, looking over the top of Connor's car. That is Matsky and Nolden as they are side by side. Nolden can't get it done as he was forced to stay on the outside. No, let me correct, Nolden does get it done. Matsky, yeah. So Matsky falls back into fifth. I'll tell you what though, uh, Matsky started this race in fourth. Usually it's drivers about in 10th place that we see hover around the same place because they've got fast drivers going by and they're catching slow drivers. So this is uh, not a bad feat by Tim to be where he is this late. Boy, there is excitement everywhere. Go back to 11th position. This is Tom Van Hoyman continues to be pressured. That is Daniel Morris. Actually just past Daniel Morris. So he's now free. And the cars ahead of him though are, are Kessler and Grossman. So doesn't really have a good chance of catching those two, although if he was closer, he could try and ride the slipstream, but at this point, he's a whole 1.2 seconds back. Unless they get into a battle or maybe get held up by someone in front, he's lost that opportunity, if you ask me. Poor Van Hoyman started this started this great lap in ninth position. He ends up now in 11th. He's lost two. Up in front, we'll go to third position. This is Connor Ryan. He's about to be gobbled up by Kerry Nolden. Nolden's got to make quick work of this, Joe. He hopes to get to the guys in front. Yeah, he's also only just under four seconds behind our leader. We know Nolden is fast, too. So this is all really because I think we had so many drivers out of place. Uh, it's why we're seeing them so quickly try and make their way through the field a little bit quickly quicker than normal. Plus, they do have that draft on the backstretch. Since it, it spread out, unlike last time, where um, last time where they had so many cars taken out at the start, this time they have trains that they can kind of leapfrog up, if you will, Bill. It's made it a lot easier for them to make progress through the field. Early, 
early days of the feature race saw Ostercamp and Kessler in a battle, followed by Nolden and and uh, and Summers. Well, the three cars that are at least up there is Summers, Ostercamp, and Nolden. The only one missing is Kessler. As we go back to eighth position, this is a madhouse going on here. This is talk about Kessler, Kessler, Grossman, and Cipolla. Chasing the likes of Phil Reed, who actually just overtook M. Ray. So I wonder if these two, uh, if they could push that a little bit harder, they could get up to Reed and start to fight him for spots. Yeah, this is a nice little train here. It starts with Reed. I think he's going to pull away. Emre's the guy that's going to be under attack from Kessler, Grossman, and Sipla. Three big names behind him. Emre is really good in these sprint races. Though. He's really good at turning in a, a mediocre feature performance into a good sprint race. Nice job, Evan. And Kessler certainly got the bit between his teeth because he just set the fastest lap of the race. Uh, is Emre just going to pull over? Yep, he's just going to let him through. I can report that Osterkamp is chopping away at that lead. It's now down to two seconds. He's oh, my up. goodness. Look at this coming through of what we're looking at there. Going through the middle, that was Grossman. Grossman was behind Kessler and Emre. He got a huge two-car draft, and he shoots through both of them. Grossman now up to seven, ahead of his cousin teammate of Kessler. Oh, poor Evan Imre. Sipla gets around him too. Imre now back to 10. Which is uh, interesting because it looks like both Imre and uh, Sipla are also on sister teams, judging by the matching paint schemes. So up next for Grossman is uh, Phil Reed. Remember, he's chasing down Tim Matsky, which will crack him into the top five. Just give you that interval to the lead. It's two seconds. Just mark it down with, with 11 minutes to go. But the action is right here, what we're looking at. This is, this is some good stuff. Reed now working on Matsky. Well, we, let's stay on this. I'm just keeping an eye on the lap times here. And another two tenths chopped off last time by for Osterkamp on Summers. Uh, what you were saying earlier, it looks like Summers kind of realized what he was up against and is pushing hard to hold him back. But Osterkamp still has slightly better pace. You can saw Phil Reed had a good run there, thought better of it. He's got another good run, looking to see if he can get around Matsky. He's got to hurry. He's got Grossman behind him. Here comes the pass. Kind of stalls out though. He had the slipstream and now he's lost some of that momentum. He's still coming up, but not at a high rate of knots. And because they're side by side, look, well, we can't see in this angle, but the, the cars behind them are gaining hand over fist because there is just a huge hole in the air. Reed finally finishes the job. He moves up to fifth. Matsky back there in sixth now. The two Sim RC cousins coming Grossman, Kessler in front with Cipolla. Those three cars are coming fast. Oh, Tim, here they are. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of positions lost. I almost wonder if it'd be smarter for Tim to just kind of let them all through and just ride behind, which is basically what Matty Cipolla has been doing. I've been kind of keeping an eye on him back there. I, I'm pretty certain he just, he knows not to fight these two drivers because they're so fast and just kind of stay behind, wait for later in the race. Exactly what Luca Ferrani was talking about, Bill. You, you have opportunities. If you keep touch with the driver, you can try and pass them just because it's a lot easier to track like this. I can just report that Osterkamp made a oh. slight mistake. That was, uh, that was Kessler, Kessler yeah. having a little bit of a moment out of the penultimate turn. Oh. Emre ends his day a little early yep. there. Goes a little wide out of the final corner, bounces across and finds the pit entrance. That's exactly what I was talking about earlier. The, the, the t temptation in that corner is so great, you think it's got a stick, it's got some banking, this car's got wings on it, but as it understeers and understeers, as you get closer, you start kind of realizing you're not gonna make it. And he realized too late. That pit entry definitely did not make matters any better. While we were on replay, a 
little earlier, Rene Ostergamp made a mistake, lost a lot of ground to Kerry Nolden, fell back into the clutches, uh, lost a lot of ground to Charlie Summer, fell back into the clutches of Kerry Nolden. Nolden makes the pass. Nolden now up into second. Ostergamp relegated to third. Now I'm starting to believe Summers can win this one. <laughs> yeah. If Nolden and Ostercamp start squabbling over this second place, it is the dream race for Charlie Summers because he wants those two to cost each other time. Matsky has finally been gobbled up by those three cars. Sipola was last to get him. Grossler, Grossman and Kessler all got him as well. So is everything beginning to sort out now. Is, is Grossler like Kim Ye or something? Yeah, that that's the... right. That's right. Connor Ryan in fifth doing a good job. Yeah, I, I mean, gosh, credit to, to Ryan. He started on the front row, still in the top five. We know how tough that is to do. Look at the three names in front of him. Summers, Nolden, and Ostercamp, and then... Reed in there as well. Kessler, Grossman, Sipola. Some big names all around. Connor Ryan. Nice job, buddy. And 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 here's the wild thing is the drivers ahead of him doing laps of 42-7, 42 flat in case of Nolden. And Connor Ryan's fastest lap is a 43-2. Okay, so he is way off their pace, but he's consistent. Ostercamp just got around. Uh, Kerry Nolden. Nolden said, not so fast. Nolden comes right back and gets them, unless they're dancing. Let's give I you an interval so. to the leader. Yeah, 3.2 seconds. Yeah. I absolutely think they are not dancing. They, because both, well, honestly, it surprises me, Bill, that they're, they're swapping positions like this. They're now 3.2, 3.5 each uh, behind Charlie Summers, which means Summers is stretching away, and they've got to be aware of that. So one of them might be thinking, why are you doing this? And the other might be thinking, I don't care. I'm not going to be able to catch Summers seconds the best I can do. It. I can't tell you which it is. Most likely it's going to be Molden since he was behind. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's making life a little bit miserable for one of them. At the moment. I think they're both saying, why are you doing this? <laughs> I want to be in front. You just can't decide who's fastest. Like Everyone that. always thinks they're the faster yeah, car. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this here. Now, up in front, this is Connor Ryan. We talked about the run he's having. Well, here they come. This is the three-car uh, eating machine of Kessler, Grossman, and Sipola. Well, they're yellow, so they're Pac-Man, right? They're just gobbling up the dots. That's... They took care of Maskey, and now the same thing's about to happen to Connor Ryan here. Now that he's been caught, it's, it's a lot harder for him to defend. His consistency is only so good at uh, keeping faster cars behind. Almost chopped off Kessler there. The trick for Kessler is to do this clean because uh, Grossman is not scared to go ahead and put his nose in there as well. Here they all come. Going to go three wide. Sipple is looking down to the inside for a moment. Oh, mercy. And just like that, one two and is it going to be three i think connor's going to lose another spot yep they get them all sipla looking to get in there see if he can get a piece of grossman cannot and yeah, just like that connor ryan falls from 58. it's only five minutes left to go at, at this point so i wouldn't be surprised if we started to see more pokes and prods out of the fin see if he could get some spots away from these guys because uh he's been he's been riding their coattails for long enough he knows that uh this is about as high as they'll get to go, most likely. So might as well start putting a challenge on, even if it loses you a little time. Look there, Ryan, though, not giving up. He's going to hang in there, as he said. Bill, speaking of losing time, Nolden's outpaced Ostercamp. Yeah, I saw that. Drove away from him. Wow. And knocked off about seven-tenths of a second uh, to Summers as well. Don't think there's enough time with just over four minutes to get there. Yeah. Of course, it was not that long ago we, we saw Charlie Summers in this position and he <laughs> Don't hit a say landmine. It, no. Don't bring it up. Don't <laughs> well, bring it up. My job, uh, buddy. Oh, poor guy. If if he wrecks it again, I'm blaming you. I'm just <laughs> telling you now. So the front three kind of separated. They even back to Phil Reed in fourth. 
Yeah, the excitement is going on here. Here comes the cousin making a move on the inside. Grossman now moving up into fifth. Kessler behind. And those two drivers begin to pull away from. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so Sipola, I talked about him having to, to try and make some moves. Well, he's not only going to make some moves, he's got to hustle here. I'm surprised that he's losing ground. Yeah, Sipola's best friend might have been Connor Ryan and Tim Matsky as, as those cars might have been slowing down a little bit. We're talking about uh, Grossman and Kessler. Well, that said, Sipola, get back in there now. I haven't really talked about much of the drivers farther down. Uh, Salito and uh, Newton in a nice little battle. That's in the points position there. Salito started... Uh, in 16th spot, picked up a couple of spots on these guys. Nice pass from them. Last car in the points, our mid-race interview, our mid-event interview, Luca Verani in 16th. It's not the last car on track either. Evan no. Emre and Sorokin are still running behind him, but they both had bigger troubles, unfortunately. Best battle on the track is still between these uh, cousin teammates of Grossman and Kessler. Looks like Kessler's got a good run. Would not be surprised to see him make this pass here. Here he goes. Just going to be an easy swing around. Now, for the second time in a row, we're seeing Sipola drop back. It almost looks like Sipola maybe has a little bit more downforce because the second half of the course is where he seems to gain. So I... That's where I'm thinking a lot of those slightly slower corners are letting him just creep his way forward. And then when they get uh, to the front stretch and then to the back stretch, which are uh, right near each other, Bill, that's when you see him suddenly drop off because he's got long straight lines. Oh, what a big oh. mistake there. Kessler taking an interesting racing line as he's gonna lose that spot to Grossman and get Sipla right back in the mix. It's pretty lucky that uh, he didn't lose it drifting it out into the grass and spinning the car. It's another one that's easy to do out of the chute is if you touch the grass, the car just whips over to the left side and you slam into that blue armco. Haven't had an argument about that blue armco yet this broadcast. Uh -oh. <laughs> I like blue. I'll go with blue. I'm, I'm sticking with you. Okay, our leader coming out of the final corner on the lap with 58 seconds to go. I believe this should be the white flag lap he gets. White flag is out, and Charlie Summers just has to hit his marks. That's all he has to do. He's been here before. He was denied earlier. I think this time it's not going to happen twice. He'll get hit by lightning so many times. Charlie Summer comfortably out in front. Nolan in second. Ostercamp going to have another pretty good points day. Going to see a swap between Kessler and Grossman. Oof. Wonder if things are going to get a little bit more intense between these two. Because this is for points. And they both want it. Yep. You look at that. Wow. Very aggressive defense there from Kessler. Grossman has to try it on the outside. Not going to be able to get it done. Sipla has fallen off. This is where it turns into MTV because uh, unfortunately stop being nice and uh, they start being real out on the track and you see those defensive moves. All this going on, our leader's gone through the toe of the boot heading towards the heel. We'll stay on this one though for a while. This is fun. You can, you can make passes into the heel of the boot here if you get a good run. He's a little far back, you can see he still feels threatened though. Let me take a look anyways. Not there. No. Nope. All right, I, I think we better go up front. Charlie Summers just has one more right-hander to go. He was fast in the feature, and he's going to win the sprint. Round number eight of the Apex Online Racing Formula 2.0 Season 11 Championship. The sprint race goes to Charlie Summer. Nolden gets second. Osterkamp gets third. Just ahead of Phil Reed. Who gets the best of that one there? It's going to be Kessler gets the best of Grossman. Sipla settles for seventh. Got a little battle for ninth to uh, Tim Matsky, although they've already crossed, actually. So he beat out Daniel Morris. 
And they're all separated all the way back from them. Last point scoring position going to go to Luca Verani. Let's assume Luca brings it home safely. With the racing done, we're going to take another show break. Don't go far. We'll run down the entire finishing order when we get back. Talk to some of the drivers before we put a lock on the gate. Back in a few. This is the Global Sim Racing Channel, bringing you the Apex Online Racing's Formula 2.0 Season 11 Championship Round 8 from Watkins Glen. Both of the events are in the books, the sprint and the feature. Let's give you the results of the sprint race now. Charlie Summer started in 13th position, worked his way through the field, and he gets the win about two and a half seconds ahead of Kerry Nolden. 
Points leader Rene Ostergamp has another good day, a sixth in the feature, a third here in the sprint. Bill Reed also as he comes home in fourth. Ostercamp's partner, Patrick Kessler, rounds out your top five. Simon Grossman gave Kessler all he could ask for as to settle for six. Matty Sippel and watched it all happen in front of him. Connor Ryan started in second position, kept the car going straight. He comes home in eighth position ahead of Tim Matsky. Daniel Morris rounds out your top ten. Joe. Tom Van Hoyman got an 11th place after holding off quite a few cars starting from third. Well, Terry Alander gets 12th. He started from 31st. What a climb for him. Giovanni Salito gets 13th and David Santana 14th. Then you've got Scott Newton finishing in 15th. Only one position up from where he started. Luca Verani gets a 16th today. So last driver to get a point. Evan Emre 17th. Alexei Sorokin 18th. David Boudelar 19th. And then our 20 drivers are rounded out by Lubomir Morris. Bill? Montessier um, comes home in the double in the blackjack position. Our pole sitter, Luca Barbe, started well until the pickle finger of fate pointed a bony finger his way. He has to settle for the double duck position. Thomas Edward behind him, Marty Pardo in 24th. 25th is Leonard Sherry, the last part of the field. Stuart Milne, Christopher Rigby, Alistair Hay, Nick Thiessen, Josh Ladd, and Erka Lindstrom. Okay, and now we're going to look, and I'm going to get be able to talk to Tom Van Hoyman, I would assume. There we go. Tom, congratulations. You uh, got to the end of the race. Top uh, 11th place finish. Yeah, 11th place finish. And in the, in the future race, I got, uh, I got P13. Um, <laughs> it was quite hard. I'm, uh, I'm soaking wet, uh, defending every fast guy I could. Um, I was like, yeah, nobody is getting through that easily. Um, of course, the slipstream helps, um, but I defended what I could. I overtook some people back, but, you know, they're still still quicker. And um, I wasn't feeling quite confident um, with the temperature of the track, so I chose for a, a setup with not um, that amount of top speed, but uh, good in the corners, you know. You need to still <laughs> manage to get 40 minutes round and 25 minutes round. But, um, yeah, P13 and P11, that's... Uh, that's still quite good for me, I know. Yeah. Uh, you happy with the way your season's going? Um, in some ways, yes. Um, but in other ways, yeah. Sometimes you got bad luck, you know, so you need to get over that and uh, going for the next round every time. So uh, two good rounds. Imola was good for me as well. P P10 and P11 again or P12, something like that. So, yeah, this, uh, these two weeks are going, uh, I'm going quite good. So, uh, again, points. So I'm happy with that. You've been around for several seasons. I think you're getting more competitive. Do you feel you're getting more? Uh, you're getting faster on the track. Um, the point is um, not getting faster, like getting a second or getting um, five tenths, but like more consistent, like knowing uh -huh. what to do when somebody is behind you. Um, of course, on this track, that's quite difficult with the slip team. Uh, like I said, um, if you got the the layout with the chicane, you know that breaks it. Um, so you can defend, still can defend if you nail, nail the chicane, but um yeah on this uh, track it was quite difficult but um now i know how to defend from people um trying to get out of uh, out of trouble and uh, yeah and at the first lap at the future race <laughs> i saw a gap um i was nearly through nearly and uh, somebody got in my way so i needed to pit but still p p13 so i was happy uh, happy about that and uh, yeah i'm i'm getting quicker but it's taking a lot of time, but <laughs> I'm getting quicker, so that's uh, more consistent. That's the key, and well, getting good, quicker. A good point, stay no matter what. Congratulations. We'll see you down the road. Thank you. Tom Van Hoyman, another good point, stay for him. Joe? We actually have our winner here with us, Charlie Summers, whose first question I have for him is, did you take a metal detector out to the track before this race to sweep for landmines? Well, it's, it's funny you say that. Oh, I'm never going to uh, be able to live down that final <laughs> final lap at most but yeah no funny enough that was um my third bin from the win uh this entire season so that whole race i was just i was just counting down the laps hoping i could keep it together and i did it was good yeah at one point though you did have the likes of of Osterkamp and nolden starting to close on you uh, were you worried that they could actually catch you or did you think that you had the pace to keep them behind? 
Well, it comes down to tire wear mostly. I think um, my setup's quite good. It's fairly neutral in that regard, so it means I can push out fairly similar laps throughout the race. Some of the SimRC guys seem to go very quick very early and then tail off a bit. But yeah, I think Rene had a little mistake. If he didn't have that, he would have probably had me, to be honest. Yeah, that definitely cost them uh, as they squabbled there uh, back there as well. Uh, so the next one is going to be almost a complete reverse, a track that's very technical and incredibly hard to pass at, Zandvoort. Uh, do you expect the, the sprint there to be a lot more difficult than here unless you find yourself regrid towards the front? Uh, yeah, I can definitely see that at Zandvoort. It's a very, very technical track and you need a lot of... Uh... A lot of trust in the drivers around you so with Watkins when you've got the super long straights you can kind of just plant the car behind someone bring it up alongside and get them in the braking but with Zanvor with all the different curves and bends you don't want to be running too wide necessarily all the time it will cost you time and it's just a bit dangerous yeah a little bit more caution needs to be exercised I think well, especially after this race, I expect the stewards will be talking to you guys before the next one. But congratulations on taking home the sprint, and we look forward to seeing you in a week. Yeah, thank you very much. Bill, that was our winner for the sprint race, Charlie Summers. You, however, I believe have Phil Reed. In poker, they call them sailboats, and that's a pair of fours, and that's just what Phil Reed had today, two fourth-place finishes. Phil, probably good enough to get you on the uh, best of day graphic. Uh, you got to feel you had a fourth place car. How do you feel? I feel good. Yeah, I'm uh, much happier than I was last week. I know that last week I won a race, but uh, two fourths is in my book better. It's an overall better result for the night. Um, yeah, feel, feel, feel good. Let's talk about the sprint race. You had to get through a, a plethora of cars there. Once you got into clear air, though, you had it easy. Oh, yeah, sorry. It was one of those uh, ones where I kind of didn't want to be in clear air because I knew that the guys ahead were a little bit quicker. And I feel like if I could just sort of stick with them and fill them in their slipstream, as this track is pretty much all about, I think, you know, I'm thinking I could get up there. But uh, I had a nice fight through the field. I think everyone sort of around me did, pushing pushing away through. And then, yeah, like you say, I, I made some moves. And then I, I had the, I had a little, I got into a sort of gap and I was thinking, okay, this is quite nice to be here. I've just passed. I've got into fourth, or I think it was fourth at the time. It might have been a little bit less. And then I had a slide coming out of the third to last corner, which put me back a couple of positions. That broke the gap completely to the top guys. So my entire race. So after that, it was all about trying to get past the people I just let past and then hope to try and close the gap, even though I knew it was going to be impossible until Rene, I think he must have got a little bit of damage because there's no way I'm going to be quicker on my own than Rene. Yeah. So I'm guessing he must have picked up the damage. I'm thinking, oh, maybe, maybe there's a chance here. One more lap and I think I would have had him. Just as you need one more, and we could have had a nice team AOR all po an all team AOR podium. But uh, unfortunately, he's uh, he's he's too good. He's got damage on his car, and he's only a little bit slower. I mean, what else have you got to do, really? But uh, yeah, uh, like you say, two fours. I'm uh, I'm happy. And here's the good news: Team AOR Orange with your partner Kerry Nolden. He had a good run as well. Let me ask you this question: What is the significance of orange? Why why choose that color to race under? quite simple i'm a dictator so i said look we're going to be in team orange and uh orange orange i just i just like the color orange that's pretty much the entire thing there's no special thing it's just and obviously with the reason kerry is in orange because we've always been teammates pretty much for as long right. as pretty much the only time that we weren't teammates i think must have been any season where one of us didn't do it and the other one did or season one from back in Pro Mazda season one so almost three years ago I think every pretty much every season since then we've always been in the team whether it be a the original AOR Blue or yeah. Aperture or I think yeah, it was you, the, the Sega Mega Drive together, yeah for, for a long time exactly you've always been together well if you're watching on the YouTube channel go ahead and send in some suggestions for a new color for next year maybe maybe a magenta might be nice for those guys hey congratulations <laughs> good luck yeah, the rest of the way all right thank you guys Joe? I'm not sure if you were expecting him to say something about scurvy or what there, but <laughs> the story behind it. But we have one more driver to talk to, and that is one who impressed me this race. Connor Ryan started on the front row, finished with eighth place, which, we, as we know, not easy to do in these sprint races. But, Connor, the real thing that I say, the reason I say I'm impressed, you only had two 
laps that were not 143. It's the first lap, which is understandable. And then towards the end, you had a 144. What is your secret to consistency? Because that is stunning. <laughs> I actually had no idea, to be honest with you. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I um, wouldn't be expecting that compared to the feature race. But I was, I was really pushing, uh, to be fair, with the setup I had. It wasn't the quickest setup, but it was one I felt really comfortable with. So I could just push every lap and... Obviously, yeah, it's difficult. Obviously, you know, I had faster cars coming past me, so I'm quite surprised by that. Well, yeah, exactly. That's why I was surprised too. I, I, did you were you letting cars by, or were you trying to defend? Uh, was it more of a race of just I, I got to get to the end? I don't care if these faster cars uh, are coming. Oh uh, yeah, I think it's a bit of half and half here because yeah, you know, the nature of the track it is quite hard to defend. You know, if it was another track, I think I would have defended a bit harder. But yeah, you know, there was no point in defending too harshly because it just would cost myself time so I, I think i drove the race the fastest race for myself really so and that worked it clearly did uh and you talked about the difficulty in defending around here I, I mean how do you go into these sprint races usually do you have a plan or do you just kind of take it as it comes and and, and let your approach develop as the race goes yeah, it's not really a good idea to have a, a plan for the sprint race, to be honest. <laughs> you can never, you never know what, what will happen. So, yeah, just took it as it came and obviously I managed to grab the lead and I just wanted to drive away. But, you know, it's, it's impossible around here and with the faster guys coming through. Yeah, so I, just take it how it goes, really. All right. Well, again, congratulations on getting that top 10 here in the sprint and for that uh, impressive show of consistency. <laughs> Look forward to seeing you at Zandvoort. Yeah, thank you, guys. Bill, that was Connor Ryan, our eighth place finisher, and I think that's it for today. So let's thank everyone that makes this possible. We'll start with the guys at Apex Online Racing for organizing Formula Renault 2.0 League and to all the members who support the broadcast. Thanks to the company's equipment and software you see on the screen now we use to stream cyberspace into your place. The original music comes courtesy of Eric Eckholm and June Lalonde. See the screen to how to contact each of them. Formula Renault Season 11 Championship returns in one week. That is going to be Round 9, another doubleheader event from Sandport. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, visit GlobalSimRacingChannel.com or check us out on social media, Twitter at Global Sim Ra or GSRC Channel, Facebook at Global Sim Racing Channel, and Instagram at GSRC underscore Graham. Don't forget to head over to our YouTube page and hit the big red subscribe button as well so that you don't miss a moment here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Finally, on behalf of the crew, Joe, Sean, and Dougie, I'd like to thank all of you for watching. And congratulations to Patrick Kessler for winning the feature and to Charlie Summers for winning the sprint. With that said, we're off to have fun storming the castle. So until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.